Good morning everybody. Here is some Miami Dolphins goob news last night. Dolphins head coach Brian Flores spoke up about Tua Tungavailoa's case after he was criticized by his teammates. Urban Meyer could mess up the Miami Dolphins 2021 draft. New information leaked from ESPN, Steelers QB's coach Matt Canada, 49ers coach Mike McDaniel, Seahawks coach Brian Schottenheimer were named news offensive coordinator candidates for Miami Dolphins in 2021 season. Let's go, bosses. The Miami Dolphins quarterback situation has been at the center of the news cycle early in the offseason, but when asked about it Thursday, coach Brian Flores reaffirmed his support for Tua Tungavailoa and expressed excitement for his development going into year two. A lot of attention gets paid to Tua, but I thought he made a lot of improvement over the course of the season. I'm excited about the future with him, Flores told ESPN. He's a young player, town the hip. I think this is a big offseason for him. That year one to year two jump will be important, like it is for all rookies. Last week, Dolphins general manager Chris Greer made clear there wasn't any QB controversy, saying, Tua, we're very happy with. He's our starting quarterback. Still, Tungavailoa has been the subject of questions, criticism and speculation after an uneven rookie season. As Dolphins coaches and executives go deeper into an offseason that includes an ongoing offensive coordinator search and an opportunity to coach the Senior Bowl later this month, they hope to move past the questions and toward a future that includes Tungavailoa. Criticism comes with the territory in the NFL across the board. Our team did a good job ignoring that stuff. Anyone who saw the Dolphins this year saw we were a tight-knit group and I think that's still the case, Flores said. The idea that there is any kind of fracture is overblown. I thought there was a lot of support throughout the locker room. My message to the team team has been to ignore the noise and the people inside the building are going to tell the truth to you. Without all the information, how do you make any determination about what's going on? The Dolphins decision makers still believe in Tungavailoa's talent. Throughout the season, players revealed to ESPN differing opinions and whether Tungavailoa or veteran Ryan Fitzpatrick gave them the best chance to win. But several teammates have expressed support and optimism about Tungavailoa's future publicly throughout the season. Miami has interviewed five candidates for its offensive coordinator job, which was left vacant after Chan Gailey resigned last week, and a top priority for the hire will be guiding Tungavailoa's year to development. Dolphins running back coach Eric Studsville, Dolphins QB coach George Godsey, Los Angeles Chargers QB coach Pep Hamilton, Pittsburgh Steelers QB coach Matt Canada and San Francisco 49ers run game coordinator Mike McDaniel have all interviewed for the job. Tungavailoa still has plenty to prove, isn't good enough in terms of trusting his eyes downfield and making plays outside of the scheme, shown by one of the lowest completion percentages on 20-plus yard passes this season. But the Dolphins should and likely will be patient in allowing Tungavailoa to improve and develop with a full offseason, more explosive offensive weapons and a playcaller who builds an offense that best fits him. He played his best football when allowed to play more freely using tempo and spread packages. The comparisons to fellow rookies Justin Herbert and Joe Burrow, who had better statistical seasons in different situations, help paint a doom and gloom situation about Tungavailoa, who completed 64% of his passes for 11 passing TDs and 5 interceptions with a pedestrian 6.3 yards per attempt. Buffalo Bills QB Josh Allen had a 53% completion rate, 10 TDs, 12 interceptions and 6.5 yards per attempt as a rookie. Kansas City Chiefs receiver Tyreek Hill admitted on Inside the NFL in December, in December that he thought Patrick Mahomes was trash as a rookie. Both are among the AFC's best QBs now. The Dolphins clearly believe development takes time and Tungavailoa will be fine. We learned that he's healthy. He still has a lot of his mobility. He's accurate. In the Arizona game, he brings us back in the fourth quarter. He brought us back in the Kansas City game. He also didn't play as well in other games. He had some bright spots and not so bright spots. That's the life of a rookie, Flores said. If he continues to learn, study, stay healthy, get stronger, work on his footwork and his eye progression and pick up where he left off, then I think we're going to be happy with his improvement. The Miami Dolphins are picking third overall but could an Urban Meyer hire mess it up? Urban Meyer is not getting hired by the Miami Dolphins but if he does land with the Jaguars, he could mess with Miami's draft plans. 
It may seem far-fetched but at the same time, is it really that off in the distance to think that Urban Meyer could mess up any trade options the Dolphins could have in their mind? Reports around the media are saying that Meyer is finalizing a deal to become the Jaguars' new head coach. The Jaguars have the top pick in the draft and will most assuredly take Trevor Lawrence but here is where things could change. Meyer didn't coach Justin Fields at Ohio State as Fields transferred a year after Meyer left the Buckeyes. That doesn't mean he doesn't know who the kid is. If Meyer prefers Fields over Lawrence, there is no way he will take him with the first pick. He and the Jaguars' new GM could trade the one overall and get a bounty of draft picks in return, move down about four or five spots and take fields with that pick. In fact, we could see a deal happen after the Jaguars take Lawrence to make sure fields is still on the board when they want to make the trade. It is a monumental size if when we are speculating on this and frankly, we all probably have a better chance of winning the Mega Millions lottery. It is fun to speculate though. So, if that were to happen and the Dolphins were in the market to trade out of the number three spot, the list of potential teams could be reduced. Of course, Fields could easily go to the Jets at number two if a trade were to happen. Reality is reality and prior to the 2020 college season, Myers ranked Lawrence ahead of Fields when he was on Fox Sports. Again, I'm not saying that the Jaguars will skip Lawrence but it would be interesting to see how everything would shake up if they did. Imagine the nightmare of Lawrence falling to the Jets at two. On the other hand, could it help Miami if another team was set on a QB in fields and Lawrence were gone one and two? The options could be reversed and Miami could find themselves with better Miami could find themselves with New information leaked from ESPN, Steelers QB's coach Matt Canada draws interest from Miami Dolphins. According to ESPN's Jeremy Fowler, Steelers quarterbacks coach Matt Canada is on the shortlist of candidates to become the Dolphins' new offensive coordinator in Miami. Pittsburgh hired Canada last January after relieving Randy Fickner of the dual QB's coach offensive coordinator role. With the Steelers not renewing Fickner's contract, one would think that Canada is in line for a promotion in Pittsburgh. However, Canada's creative concepts are better suited for a young, mo NFL reporter Ian Rapoport, 49ers run game coordinator Mike McDaniel and OC candidate for Dolphins. The 49ers' coaching staff shakeup likely won't be limited to the defensive coordinator spot. They could also be looking for some new members of their offensive staff as well. Run game coordinator Mike McDaniel and passing game coordinator Mike LaFleur could be popular names for teams searching for an offensive coordinator. NFL reporter said. McDaniel has done an excellent job of helping orchestrate a very good 49ers run game during his four years in San Francisco. He's spent the last 10 years coaching on the same staff as Kyle Shanahan, which is part of the reason teams covet him as an OC. San Francisco has been able to keep McDaniel around while teams pluck coaches from other staffs, but it's hard to imagine they'll be able to retain him if he's a popular name among teams hiring OCs. The 49ers could theoretically change his title to elevate him on the coaching ever relinquish play calling duties. The Dolphins won't be the only team asking about 49ers coaches. Should Robert Sala get hired as a head coach, he could target San Francisco's coaches as well while filling out. Brian Schottenheimer fit as Dolphins' new offensive coordinator. The Miami Dolphins' search for a new offensive coordinator is underway, but as these 2020-2021 playoffs continue, the Dolphins may continue to find more experienced, enticing candidates coming into the market as teams become eliminated from playoff contention. A great example is the presence of former Seattle Seahawks offensive coordinator Brian Schottenheimer, who was relieved of his duties this week in the aftermath of a wild-card loss to the Los Angeles Rams. Schottenheimer had quarterback Russell Wilson cooking early on in the season, as the Dolphins found out the hard way. But Wilson's play regressed in the second half of their campaign and Wilson went from a legitimate MVP candidate to a playoff flop. Schottenheimer held the keys of the Seattle offense for three seasons, and that came on the heels of a nine-year stretch of calling plays for the New York Jets and St. Louis Rams from 2006 to 2014. Could a trip to South Florida to 2014? Could a trip to South Florida be next on Schottenheimer's journey in pro football? There are some links that would at least somewhat support the move. First and foremost, Schottenheimer's approach has always been to run the football. In three years in Seattle, his teams were second, third and 17th in the NFL in rushing attempts. 
His tenure in New York saw the Jets rank 7th, 13th, 19th, 1st, 2nd and 16th in rushing attempts. And, from a productivity standpoint, his teams have done well to capitalize on those reps. Each of Schottenheimer's three seasons in Seattle featured a top 10 rushing attack from a yards per carry basis. What about the Dolphins? They've been trying to get the run game figured out for two seasons under Brian Flores. And they're well on their way from a personnel perspective, but they aren't where they need to be. You do get the sense that Miami does want to run the football, they were 16th in the NFL with 428 rush attempts in 2029 yards per carry. The benefit to a high-volume running game in Miami. Like in Seattle, the Dolphins boast an accurate quarterback with plus intangibles but some limitations within the pocket on account of his size. Tungavailoa has been compared by some to Drew Brees, and by others to Russell Wilson. So having the play caller who helped to pen Wilson's most productive three-year stretch of play may be a venture worth exploring for the Dolphins. Wilson enjoyed the first, third and fourth best career passer ratings in his three years under Schottenheimer. He threw for 106 touchdowns to just 25 interceptions and twice passed for over 4,100 yards in that same three-year stretch. So while the calls for let Russ Cook always seem to want the Seahawks to put more on his plate, the balance in Seattle set the Seahawks up for plenty of offensive success. For Miami, you have a play caller who has a prerogative to run the football, one that seemingly aligns with your own hopes and aspirations. You have you have a play caller who is experienced in navigating the issues of a short-statured quarterback and you have a play caller who has operated an offense that has scored 428, 405 and 459 points in the last three seasons. If Tua Tungavailoa is what the Dolphins believed he was when they drafted him at number 5 overall, would Schottenheimer not have a fair to strong case for the gig in Miami? This isn't to say he's the best man for the job, but he's certainly qualified for it nonetheless. We'll see if